What's up guys, this is Arash over at Rugger Productions and Arash Tabby Films. Photographer, cinematographer, never AI. This is a real voice, this is really me. And today I'm going to start talking about the pros and cons of the Hyatt Regency in Huntington Beach, Orange County. I'm going to give you some pros, some cons from a vendor's standpoint. Although I also hear what guests say, I do get the reaction from brides and grooms before the wedding and after the wedding. So keep this in mind. So I would consider um, Hyatt Regency a luxury venue, a absolutely stunning, stunning venue. It's right close to the beach, so you can get beach photos and video if you're getting married there. They have a, a small stairway. They have a hall. They have the outdoor area by the fountain. Absolutely, absolutely stunning place and some of my favorites about this venue are the large uh, ballroom uh, being close to the beach like I said the photo ops in the hallway the big mirror that you can use for photos for video um, and it has its it has its own valet parking um, which a lot of places do but you can actually park off-site a little little bit of a walk but you can actually park off-site too um, either at the beach parking or on the street parking. It is technically an option, so I don't want to totally trash it for parking-wise. That's why I'm going to put it in the pro side, not in the con when I usually do trash venues that don't have good parking. And it it's, it was, it's one of my favorite venues that I've shot at, uh, and it has a place, a beautiful bridal suite that you can get on site. It has the kind of uh, conference area for the groom, like, most uh, hotels do for grooms although this one was a little bit larger than average so again pluses for the groom side pluses for the bridal suite and yes so those are some positives about the place I, it's it's one of the top venues basically but it also does have cons and one of the cons especially with luxury venues is they have more uh, friction for vendors so two places where we experienced friction with this menu was one, they kind of off the top told us that we can't fly the drones there, which I think is kind of uh, was kind of weird to me because as a licensed operator, um, I know each each venue can decide who can fly, who cannot fly, but it was kind of uh, preemptive for them to say no drones when you know you can just fly it across the street technically, which is what we did. We flew across the street to get. Our drone shot because it was important to my bride and groom to get drone shots and I'm a, I was a licensed pilot so I wasn't breaking any laws so I flew across the street got some aerial shots of the venue as you can see and I also hired a helicopter to get flyby shots so they can't really tell me I can't do that because they don't control the airways um, so I got two types of aerial shots legally ethically you know all that good stuff so I, I didn't really like them telling me I can't get drone shots I can't get aerial shots when they can't control the airways at least they can't even across the uh, across the beach across the street at the beach that was one negative uh, I experienced with them before another negative that again this is a luxury venue that we've experienced with other luxury venues is when it comes to vendors they require a special insurance this special insurance is usually not most most vendors don't have this because it's it's uh, you don't you don't purchase it up front. So for example, if we pay uh, six hundred dollars for insurance for photography for the whole year, this extra insurance is like a hundred dollar fee on top of that per venue per time we want to get it. And the reason for this is it's like a primary primary clause, which means that if something were to happen, they get paid first before anyone else. So it's usually an additional charge. From my experience and from others I know who have insurance, this is not just included. Um, insurance companies charge extra for this, so they have to go back, redo your insurance, add this in, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a pain in the ass to ask the bride and groom, hey, there's an additional hundred dollar fee now, so send us another hundred dollar fee because venues don't ask for insurance until usually a couple weeks before the wedding. Sometimes it's a month, but they've usually already booked us a year, nine months, six months in advance. So they know how much we cost. And for us to come back a month before or two weeks before to be like, hey, there's another additional fee, 
it's crappy. I don't like doing that. So we eat the cost. I don't even want to approach them and be like, hey, we're getting charged extra, extra and I got to bring that to you. So I eat the cost. And I think other vendors I know, like the, like the band or DJ, they, they eat the cost too. They don't go back to the bride and groom. So it's just, it's just kind of a, another hassle, a friction there. Um, another thing not really associated with Hyatt, but with luxury uh, venues in particular is they have a single planner associated with that venue. So when you're getting married there, they kind of say you have to go with this planner, which is fine. I'm not anyone to tell that venue who they can choose as a planner. But then the planner comes and says, you have to go with one of these two photographers. You have to go with one of these two DJs. You have to go with one of these two caterers and so on. And I don't know, man, it's like a cock block. You're not giving them the best options. You're giving them two people who you like, who either give, give a kickback to the planner or who um, just have had a relationship. They shoot free for the planner. They shoot their kids' birthdays or things like that. And that's not ethical. And you're not doing your best for the bride and groom. You're not doing your uh, fiduci fiduciary duty in the financial world for your bride and groom. I know it doesn't have to do with finances, but I'm just using that term. It's just, it's just my preference. I know maybe I'm, I'm being too picky, but it's something a bride and groom should look out for when they're booking at the Hyatt or somewhere similar to the Hyatt, especially in Orange County and LA where this is more common because, I don't know, maybe maybe people are just litigious and they have to come up with these rules in Orange County and LA, um, but they create more friction. But that's also not true. I've shot at many, many venues in LA and Orange County where they don't create this kind of friction for us. Other hotels like the Marriott, uh, Hilton, you know, private, private estates. They don't, they don't make us jump through these hoops or tell us these restrictions. So keep that in mind when you're booking your venue, when you're talking with your planner, make sure everyone on your team is there for you. They are on your team. They're not looking out for themselves because I have never done anything that has, um, been in the interest of like my DJ that I'm that I is my homie or uh, a florist that I like it's always who's the best person for this job and how do I get the best possible results for the bride and groom because that's my job as a photographer cinematographer as their guide as their friend because they often become my friend through this whole journey when we're planning a wedding shout out to these two they were absolutely amazing they made it so much fun for their wedding. And if you're getting married at the Hyatt, you're going to have a beautiful wedding. And just keep in mind everything I said. If you have a planner taking care of everything, then you don't have to worry about a lot of this stuff. But if you're watching this, if you're listening to my voice, then you're probably wondering about the pros and cons of the Hyatt. So these are some pros and cons. Best of luck on your special day. This was Rush.